Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, or uh, welcome if it's the first time being here. Today we're going to be doing a set of course of Competizione, uh, it's a race around Spa. We've got Liam Prince in the race, uh, he's actually qualified 13th, or was put in 13th, 13th, I don't think we qualified this race, I was put in 21st. And uh, the actual Mercedes on the left of us is a guy called Nagel, who I was in a race with previous. Um, we're at the top of the, I think I qualified 6th and Nagel qualified 4th. We actually ended up finishing 4th uh, and 5th. Myself 4th and Nagel making a mistake on Eau Rouge on the very last lap. Now it's a 20 minute race. Um, and basically the objective of today is try and finish the race with no damage. I know, it's uh, easier said than done starting at the back. Now a set of course for competition is actually very good for the safety rating and uh, actually cleanliness of racing. Not quite on par to eye racing from what I hear. I can't say I've never tried eye racing. Um, so actually, it's doable. It's doable. Now let's see how we go. So, rolling start, up a rouge and onto the straight. Sitting behind the Ferrari now is basically two abreast, mostly. Um, I think Nigel's trying to make a move on the left in the Mercedes. Like I say, we'll probably end up letting him through because we're just trying to say clean this race as we do. Switch to the cinematic camera and you can actually see it's pretty much two abreast the whole way around those two corners there. Uh, GTR's gone a little wide now. Nagel holds on the left, tries to make an outside round the Ferrari. I'm pulling up behind the Ferrari. Notice he's a little too slow, so I decide to try and make an outside lunge as well, giving me the inside for no name. And get the job done around the Ferrari. Now sitting behind me and Nagel. So, the last race, me and Nagel were running 220s. Uh, the track temperature is actually at 39 degrees Celsius. I think this is one of the KK or TTT. K Town servers, I believe it's called. Um, at 39 degrees Celsius is actually quite high for the optimal. I believe optimal is about 27 degrees. Now I've run two 19s around here in uh, the 27. The 39, though, I find it difficult to keep into the 220s. Um, see some aliens uh, running two 16s in the optimal. I think 215 is the leaderboard for the Porsche at the moment. Um, for the monthly challenges that don't seem to change on the month um, but anyway it's so uh, yeah uh, the fastest I've seen around this kind of temperature was a 218 I mean um, maybe you guys have seen something different but I haven't been playing as open competition only that much actually um, me and Liam link in the description I've got actually a couple of guys uh, joining us in racing now as well and starting up so I've been playing a lot of so course with them um, still really good for GT3 racing in all honesty the um, Assetto Corsa, basically a lot of this was taken from Assetto Corsa. Uh, even, to, even what I found out yesterday, uh, the camera angles. If you hit F7, you can get to a free, free camera. Very similar to the Assetto Corsa replays as well. Gives you some beautiful cinematic shots you might have seen at the very beginning. Okay, so, up au rouge. And I've actually seen the Porsche has actually lost some speed up there. But I find it very difficult with the Porsche up over anyway, but maybe it's the rear engine, I'm not too sure, I haven't spent too much time with it yet. But it's given us the opportunity to maybe get down the outside of Nagel, but we couldn't break late enough to hold it off, and Nagel has managed to maintain his position. Alright, so we're coming up behind the McLaren now. I think me and Nagel see that he's a little bit slower as well, so we're going to try and make a move around, around him. Don't think we can do it here. Perhaps we can do a no name. Nigel looks like he's got a better exit. And he's going to move over to the inside. Now, I'm not sure the McLaren has seen him. And I only say this because as we both go round him, I didn't see any contact there. But later on, I got a message from the McLaren saying something uh, along the lines of lucky this time. Now, I don't know whether he thought I made contact with him. But uh, as we can see, him and Nagel got very close. Perhaps it was a netcode type uh, issue. Sorry for the lag spikes. I'm trying to work it out on the recordings. I don't actually know what's going on with them yet. 
Okay, so we saw see Liam for the first time just up front, in front of those uh, two cars in front of Miguel. He actually just came off, losing a little bit of speed, but he's doing really well at the moment. I think he's he's up, up, up into the definitely up into the top ten. I'm not sure how high up yet. We'll check on the end of the lap. So I want to draw your attention to the um, reverse camera at the moment. Keep your eyes in it. The McLaren that messaged me seems to come shooting across. Now I'm not sure if he was aiming for me or whether it was a lock of the brakes. But uh, either way, we managed to escape unscathed. Very lucky for that time. Nagao managed to get next to the port, the uh, Ferrari now. And, and Liam's actually up into sixth from what we see. We've just scraped into the top ten. Nagao gets the inside on the Ferrari, manages to pull ahead of him for Radion and then Eau Rouge. Slots back in position, doesn't look like anyone's going to fight up the hill. I, I, I tell a lie, it looks like I'm going to fight up the hill. Very close to contact with the Ferrari ahead of me. We sit in behind him now for the slipstream along the long straight. Is he going to give us the space to move? Yes. We think we're going to try and take on the inside. It's going to be down to braking now. I've got about a quarter in on him. We take him under braking. Oh, and slot back inside on the line. Just avoiding contact. He gets a bit excited on the accelerator trying to catch and loses it into the grass. Now, I've noticed the GTR behind me as well. He's quite quick. I believe that was for a position of ninth as well. You can see Nagel now moving in on the Lambo. Now, I notice the Lambo has some lag issues. Um, very difficult to deal with people that do have lag. Um, it's usually not their fault. Sometimes it's just server location. Sometimes I hear Australia have really bad servers or something at the moment. Uh, or maybe that's just for the competition servers. I'm not too sure yet. But either way, getting by them is a bit of a nightmare. Usually the server kind of gives them about two cars lengths because it can't really make up their mind what they're doing. Um, so under brake, you really have to go for it on the brake. Or luckily, if you get to pass someone on the straight, best place to do it. Right, so as you can see, the GTR behind is actually gaining on me. Um, he seems to be a bit more inconsistent, from what I can see, sliding around a bit. But in fairness, we are only running 222s this race. Like I say, we've taken about 5% off just to try and avoid some of the the traffic and the chaos kicking off up ahead. Now Liam and Nagao are having a great battle up there. Liam taking, was taking the defensive line all back to the session set, the last section. Sorry, I, I, I'm wrong, it was uh, Nagao and the Lambo actually. Nagao has actually made short work of the Lambo on the last corner there, catches him under braking. Seems to uh, be where me and Nagao can move through some of the pack here is under some of the heavy braking sections. Uh, I try and take note of that and actually use it in the latter half of the race. Okay, so it looks Nagel, the Lambo, myself, and then the GTR behind. Um, that Mercedes is actually looking really quick by Nagel. Uh, it's making me want to try them, to be fair. I've heard good things about them, uh, but also I'm hearing really good things about the Bentley getting new updates now that I'm, I want to have a look at as well, go back to the Bentley for a bit. You can see the Lambo stuttering on the left there. That's a little bit of lag. Luckily, I've got the inside, and hopefully I can just squeeze by him under braking again, try and get past that lag. Try and give him enough room on the inside. He was on the curb, so I managed seeing the car radar, pull over and use the optimal line there and pull away. So, we are now Liam, Nagel, and myself. And if nothing has changed from the previous couple of laps, Liam will still be in sixth. Leaving this 7th uh, and 8th for myself and Nagel. Let's see what we can do. So Liam came off a little piece back on the corner just before No Name. Giving Nagel a chance to actually get almost onto the inside of him there. Nagel sliding a tiny piece. Liam keeping it under control. Getting onto the power early. Sorry for the lag spikes. We're looking to the recording software, as I said. Cashing Nagel a little bit under braking, but he's going to get a better exit out of this corner here, but the pack is now looking tight. Should be an interesting last section of the race. Well, we're only three laps in, to be fair. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. On to... That's a tricky corner, that right-hander there, because you, you can get it flat out. Sometimes it's ideal just to kiss the inside of the curb to help rotate the car 
a little piece more. Um, otherwise, you can understeer out of that very easily. Liam and Nigel now. Oof. Nigel was almost on the inside there, but Liam just had the space to be able to pull over. Giving me a chance to get onto the outside of Nigel. Maybe giving me the inside for the next corner. Nigel Braver on the brakes and manages to cut back in front of me. Nice move by himself. And again, we file back in behind Liam. Now, I've noticed I've got a Lambo in the rear camera. And he's, I've actually given him space on the outside. Now, what I don't want him to do is get by and have to deal with the lag again. So, what I'm going to do, take the inside, park it on the apex, forcing him to slow down. And then continue onto the, uh, onto the ideal line. Now, the Lambo could have taken a wider line there. Anticipated that I was going to be slow taking the inside line. And actually tried to cut back on me instead. Maybe giving him a better run to take me down the straight to Eau Rouge. Um, very difficult getting Eau Rouge and on, but just perfect there in this Ferrari. It feels like it wants to kick out all the time. And as you can see, it's always very close on the uh, on the curb at the very top. I think I got one track penalty uh, through this for warning for corner cutting. So Liam and Nagao now. Liam's taking a little bit more of an inside line to try and um, negate the effect of that Mercedes uh, handling. The girl's actually going for an outside push this time. Liam, two wheels on the curb, but just managed to slide back in. He gave Nigel a card to let the card's width there. But he's getting a bit scrappy. Nigel getting a bit more desperate now to try and get by. Liam's done a great job for holding, holding the defensive line and holding... Uh, he's got it's a lot of pressure on him, to be fair. So being able to hold up Nigel like this is... It's good. I think Miguel is only fractions of a second faster a lap, but it can feel a lot in the corners. So, up to eighth, like I said before, Liam sixth. Um, Miguel 0.29 of a second behind them. A second in that. So, between the three of us, there's only a second. You see how tight this is. Lambo dropping off a little piece now. And it looks like... Nigel might be thinking of making a move on the brakes here. He's going to have the slipstream. Uh, another factor that unfortunately Liam has, has to deal with is uh, the slipstream on these straights. As long as you get to be a little bit careful and sit behind him in the corners, get a good enough exit, you can really make the distance on the straight and pull up. Both of them breaking late and diving in. A bit of a, a, bit of a wiggle there. And side by side they're out. Now Liam's got the inside for T1. Oh, actually they switched, sorry. Now nigel has got the inside. Liam cuts across. I try and go for a move. I don't see the way in, so I have to break and let it by. Let them back out, giving a bit of uh, space back to the Lambo. Oof. This uh, four-man race is really hotting up. So, Radion and O'Rouge again. And this time, oh, I have a bit of an incident over Eau Rouge. Nigel has a bit of an incident. The Nigel's incident is much worse than mine. I managed to squeeze by the Lambo behind me as well. And now only Liam ahead. Now that is the exact same incident Nigel had on the last lap of the last 20 minute race where I managed to pass by. Um, same cars again as well. Very strange, we both have the same incident. It just shows how hard we're pushing to really try and make up this time. So. Liam in 6th, myself in 7th, and the Lambo now in 8th. What we're going to try here is to make a move on Liam. Now, difficult because me and Liam race a lot together now, so we're starting to learn each other's uh, racing styles. Liam takes a little bit too much of the curb on the left there, slowing the match down for the run-up to the next long left-hander here. I got to sit behind Liam for a couple of laps this race as well, and I got to, got to kind of analyse a little bit where he's slower and it's a bit difficult because I'm about to, to say it because it's obviously going to make him a faster racer but I think it's the heavy braking zones um, having a look into the last managed to be a little bit nicer a bit smoother through those two corners there but the Ferrari is mid-engined against this uh, this GTR as well which I feel to myself is a little bit heavier but then kind of does pull on the acceleration on the straight um, could say the same about the Bentley, I'm quite proficient at that. Use a bit of the slipstream to just pull to the right of Liam and let him know that I'm there. The idea is to keep a bit of pressure on to him, just let him know that I am looking for the move um, and hopefully get an error somewhere. So I pull left for the outside, which will give me the inside for the second half of the chicane. 
just managed to scrape by on the brakes. A little bit late into the corner, managed to park it on the apex. Liam accidentally hits the kerb, slowing him down for what otherwise would have been quite a decent exit there. Um, we would have would have been a lot closer onto this straight, but he's just lost a, a tenth of a second just clipping that kerb. T1, and Liam's caught a little bit back, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to fast forward for the rest of the three laps of the race. Not really much happens here. Um, I wasn't close enough to fifth. I believe there was like a 19 second gap. Um, and I, I started to slowly pull away from Liam as well. Not by much. I believe it was only like a couple of seconds over the end of the last two to three laps. Uh, but it was a great race. A lot of racecraft going on. A lot of taking your time, trying to think the the race through and see what would be optimal for the best outcome. Um, usually I like having a good start from the back, qualify for my first race session and then start from the back. Uh, Liam had a bit of an incident with the Ferrari it actually seems, but only five seconds overall. Great race, Nigel came in eighth in the end and um, yeah, best of a 221.7 so I did manage to drop it under the 22s for that race at the end there. But thanks for guys for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. 